Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. I am Brett Berkey and this is Mr. Rick Allen. That's me. Yes, and today we are going to be talking about something that has seemed to come up more often than not because uh, Paper Stack seems to attract a lot of uh, new buyers because we've made the process so simple to get in. We've got new buyers. We've got a lot of seasoned season buyers, a lot of seasoned sellers, but um, we've definitely sort of bridged that gap that makes the you know it makes it easier for new new investors in the note space to conduct business true for sure and so uh you know so it's some of the things that you know you find is you know things that they either forget about or are just not privy to uh and so what we're talking about today is the things that you need to do before you purchase your first note um because you know they'll ask the questions on well you know uh i i want to i want to buy some notes but do i have to be you know have an LLC or can I do it my personal name? Uh, do I uh, do I have to have a debt collector's license? Uh, are, are you going to manage the, the collecting? Are you going to pay me the money when they they get it from the borrower? Who who does all that? And it's like, okay, so there's a couple things need to be lined up. So we're going to start with the beginning of. What do I say? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do at the beginning? I tell this everybody. You should always do what. Get some education. Get some education. That's right. Yeah. Um, no matter what you're going to do, whether no matter what investment or pretty much anything, I guess, in life, you want to have a little bit of education. When it comes to notes, I say a lot of education. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to go out there and find, go start on Google. Look on Google and get a high-level understanding of notes. If you're coming from the real estate world, there'll be a lot of overlap. It'll be very quick. You should pick it up. You'll understand mm-hmm. it. You know, it's, it's real estate back. Mm-hmm. Um, but you want to understand like what's going on. So go out there. There's, there's tons of educators out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the places I would say that, you know, are very, uh, giving with their knowledge is of course, bigger pockets, bigger pockets, you know, you can get a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of people in the note area of bigger pockets that are very open and willing just, I would honestly, if, if you are getting started, just go type in like mortgage notes in bigger pockets and just start reading through the threads, and you'll get a, a wealth. There's Good Deeds Investing, po- uh, what is it? Oh crap! The Good Deeds Investing Podcast mm-hmm. uh, group. Yeah, uh, with Chris there's Seven, lot, yeah, Chris Seven, and yeah. or you know, the thing is, the one thing I would say though is, you know, the, the, the paralysis analysis is real, and if you start picking ten different venues and trying to learn from ten different people, you're going to get mixed messages. Well, that's Pick a, you know, three, stick to those three things, and just go deep on them. That's a good point, Brett. I want to like paralysis or analysis. Paralysis by analysis is um, it's a good thing. It's a, that's a good thing to talk about because you know I've you know we've gone to so many different um, you know events tied to an educator, mm-hmm. multiple educators, multiple events, and you talk to people who have been in these groups, and some of them have been part of this. I've been part of this group for five years. You know, I've got tons of education, and it's like how many notes have you bought? Mm-hmm. You're like. Well, none. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow, you've bought no notes, but you've been part of this. And it's like, they're like, yeah, I just couldn't pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. Just always trying to learn. And, you know, there's always the, the I guess, seminar junkies, you could call them. Mm-hmm. It's all, always about learning. But, you know, don't, at some point you have to get off the sidelines and get in the game. Yeah. And you find a good educator who's going to give you the information uh, maybe they offer some consulting, and I know like Kevin Shortell offers consulting, mm-hmm. allows you to call in with questions. Note school, same thing. Mm-hmm. Got weekly phone calls. You want somebody who's going to offer you education and then say, go buy, bring me back your questions. Mm-hmm. And that's a great way to do it. Yeah, very much so. That's right. how we did it. Yeah, that's right. You guys were on that every Wednesday, right? Uh, it was like Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays. You guys were on every Monday, Wednesday? No, I wasn't on every one, but... TJ said he, he didn't miss, like, two years. He was on there and would sit and listen, yeah. Every single Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, that's just that's just valuable. Because you don't even know, at that point, you don't even know the questions to ask. Well, yeah, that's the thing, is you got to hear other people ask the questions. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Isn't it you, I mean... Like, when that's you're the first, unknown unknown. Yeah, when you get started, you don't even know... You don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. But until you start listening, you're like, oh. And case studies are the best. So, yeah, education is going to be kind of key... And, you know, if it's a bigger group and you got more people and, you know, also, you know, you want to know that your educator has actually been doing the business yeah. for a while. Yeah. There's, there's some educators out there who have sprung up who they've come 
they bought their first note on Paperstack and now they have a education series. So that's, you know, it's good, but you just want to make sure that there's a lot of education. Make sure there's well, make sure the person you're learning from didn't read a book from somebody else and now they're regurgitating, right? That's something that happens in the internet marketing world, the world it I, does. where I come from, and it it always peeves me, you know, cuz it's like, you know, it's like, "Hey, wait a second. Well, that's not a person you can go to with questions. No, that's a theory person. That's a well, that's a person who's like, "Oh, I can Let's like an internet marketing. They're like, I can take this and make money off of it. Right? Yeah, I, we, I saw behind the scenes back in the day, and I was like, where they wanted me to be like one of the educators, me and uh, Greg, and they're telling us how the how it worked. It was like a little syndication where we we'll get in, you we'll promote our stuff for a little bit, and then we'll turn around and when it's time for you to put out yours, we promote your stuff, and it's just a circle of life, and we we're just kind of like, that's disgusting. I was like, that's yeah. not genuine and. Yeah, it's. I don't even know if that forum's still around. No, but the point is, the, I mean, kind of tying was, it all in there. Right now. Yeah, it was. But <laughs> the whole point is, is like, look, you want to find somebody who, if they're teaching you this, they're a mentor. Mm -hmm. They've been in this business for a while. They've got history. They've got the, they've got the battle wounds that they can talk to you and say, oh, I know why I got this one, or mm -hmm. do you remember that time when this happened, or I'm sharing real world experiences. Point in case, who are some of the best professors? Somebody who's actually doing it. Yeah. Somebody who can teach it, mm -hmm. who's actively doing it, is something that's yeah. That's what you want, right? No, that's so true. education is first. Yeah, uh, yeah, I totally agree on that. And then after that, the questions is are usually, well, uh, do I need to be licensed? And you know, do I, do I have to have a debt collector's license? And I'm always like, well, I don't, know, I don't know, Ohio, Georgia, the, maybe. Yeah, the licensing is definitely. Um, that's something you want to look at because there's mm -hmm. each state is different. Um, there's ways around it with buying mm -hmm. through, you know, if you have a, if you're using like a trustee or mm -hmm. like U.S. Bank or something like that, because you can, you can fall under their license. But yeah, you definitely want to go look at each state, figure out the states that you're going to buy in or you want to buy in. Mm -hmm. And and start small. Don't look at the the United States and be like, okay, I got to get a license here, 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 here. Mm. Because what happens is it's gets it's an elephant. And you're not gonna you're gonna eat it. You're just gonna eat it. You're not gonna do it. So look and figure out the states. You know, I would find states where you know you don't think that there's licensing required or anything like that, and go go. Go look. Mm -hmm. Have an attorney. Go consult an attorney. They're going to tell you, yes, do I need, do you need to be licensed here? No, as long as you're doing this, this, or this. And like, great. And so, you know, you can gather a handful of states, and then you say, okay, I'm buying in this state. Um, you know, then you're going to want to look at in the later on, like maybe you want to buy in some other states, and there's licensing issues there. So you can go figure out the licensing. But, you know, just start adding them a little bit at a time. That's the key. My one question would be, too, is uh, why would you pick one state over another? Judicial, non-judicial, it's my backyard, I live there. There's a lot of different reasons. Interesting. So, like, yeah, we have um, you know, some people that are hot, hot to trot on Georgia. Mm -hmm. And Georgia seems to be a pretty tough one. You need some licensing in Georgia. Yeah, and I, 100%. I think maybe and there... so much it goes two ways. Like, people are going to Georgia because you need licensing and it will keep more people out. Mm -hmm. And they, there's more deal flow for them because mm -hmm. it's Georgia specific, and they know exactly. Hey, when you close a deal in Georgia, you got to have what is it like two signatures on the assignment? Uh, there's just there's a lot of rules, and so people are just going to always ask questions about that. So, you know, licensing, figure out where you want to buy, narrow it down, start there, and expand out. True. Once okay. you get that, so next thing you want to do, figure out like another one is like where am I paying for this, or how am I going to pay for this? Where am I getting my money? True. It, you know, and that'll kind of lead into um, what is, you know, how am I taking title to these? You know, what's my what's my structure, my corporate structure going to look like? And if you figure out the money first, it kind of helps you figure out the the corporate structure. And you can go to an attorney and say, well, here's where I'm getting my money. For instance, if you're buying with self-directed retirement account, say it's with Quest or New View. It's going to be New View, FBO, Rick Allen, self directed IRA, 123. Mm. Or Rick Allen or New View, FBO, um, Rick Allen's health savings account. So that's kind of 
you'll know you're getting your money from there. They're going to have specific ways that you need to take title to the property. And they're very specific on that. Mm. Maybe you have your own capital. Maybe you have a rich uncle and you're structuring, you're, you're doing an LLC. At that point, you're like, look, what's the best way to structure this deal that keeps us safe, that keeps it secure, keeps us in compliance with the SEC and all that stuff? Go, see, go talk to an attorney. They're going to help you out. Say, look, here's what I'm trying to do. Here's my structure, which is what we did. Mm-hmm. At the beginning, we went and found structure that, that worked for us. And the, our attorney said, here's your structure. This is what you need to do. We move forward. Great. So, Interesting. So it's not also too, it's like you don't need an LLC for each one you get, right? Meaning what? Each note. No, you can do that. Um, you know, there's things out there. There's um, Texas Series LLCs, in which case you start with a mothership LLC, and then each time you buy an asset, it goes a, a new LLC is spun up for that asset. What's the advantages of that? Um, well, for one, you're siloing off the asset, yeah. right? So if, if for instance, it's a rental property, mm-hmm. and, you know, it might be worth 50000 but you've got 10 other properties that are bundled up into the same LLC worth 100000 each, and somebody in that $50,000 um, property slips and falls and goes and starts to sue the LLC, well, they can't come after you personally, but they can go after all the assets inside that LLC. And so you have now all those assets inside the LLC are at risk of being taken. Mm-hmm. So if they were all in their own individual LLCs, and you maintain it's called the corporate veil. Yeah, yeah. You don't pierce the corporate veil. Then theoretically, they can slip and fall, sue, and they could only get you for that one. They couldn't get you for the other ten. So that that's would be more, a re- yeah. That so that's more of a play in the rental in the rental market. Yeah, yeah, it's in the rental market, but it's definitely. You're talking about how you, you would do that and actually put the name of maybe the, the house owner or something, so like it would. Sure, we've done that. Like, what was the advantage of that? <laughs> so I know. What asset was tied to it? Oh, it was simply for dummy proofing it and say just making it as blatant as possible. That's one two three Smith Street LLC. Well, which asset's that? Well, it's one two three <laughs> Smith Street. We uh, we would do that, and we we still do that on rentals. Um, if we take something back through foreclosure, mm-hmm. um, and we're going to sell it with owner financing, mm-hmm. we'll or it's going to be held um, vacant. Mm-hmm. We'll put that into a new LLC, so that way, if something happens, if somebody were to break in, just you got to protect yourself as much as possible. Yeah. So that's stuff that we do. Yeah. So you want to talk to an attorney, figure out the corporate structure. You know, some people say, "Well, that's way overkill." Mm-hmm. Others will say, "No, it makes sense." Would you ever buy one in your personal account? No. <laughs> no. No. I would not. Yeah. I would not. Why? Explain why. Because then I'm personally liable. Yeah, oh, for, oh, for the note. Well, you mean would I would I take title to a property in my personal name that's like an investment? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. Yeah. Because if if something were to happen and they come back and they try to sue, then they're su- they're, they're able to sue me. Mm-hmm. No, you always yeah no that would be not me. Well, I knew the answer. I just wanted to, other people might not know the answer. That's a good question. Though. Yeah, I mean you know it's one of those things where. So okay, so we got that down. So this is how you're gonna. So we got to figure the, out your structure, your right? Structure, your structure. So you educate, your, mm-hmm. capital, capital. Where's it coming from? Yeah. Structure. Mm-hmm. Now you want to go, and you're like, if you're ready to pull the trigger, it's time to figure out. Okay, I got to set up. I got to talk to a servicer. Yeah. I well, well, out, one question before you go there. Like, is it, and this is just me because I don't know. When you're learning education from certain people, and I'm sure you can't speak for all, but. Do they teach you how to set up structures like that? Is it is there they a- will definitely like some of them definitely have affiliates with people that do the structures and you can get really, 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 really crafty on structures of like trustees and trusts and trusts within trusts and you can make it super complicated. Um so yes, they people will have their advice on that. I would say talk to an attorney. Um we've got a good group out of, you know, Texas right now that we're working with, I would say spend the money up front because it'll save you in the headaches in the back. Yeah, we need to have an attorney on one of these days. We've got several yeah. attorneys that we can bring on, so... They're not going to charge us, are they? No, but when you get them on here, <laughs> it's, fu- it's funny because you get attorneys on and it's like you're on our podcast, so we're promoting their business, 
And if you've got a, like three or four questions that you need answered and you don't <laughs> want to get charged for it, you can, you can, God, let me ask you a real quick question here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hypothetically. Right. Hypothetically. <laughs> what if? Yeah. The what if questions are the worst. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, we'll be sure to write that down and get somebody on. Um, so you were, you were getting to the next part, which was? Servicers. Okay. Loan servicers. Who are they? What do they do? They're the people that are going to keep a layer of you don't want to have to talk to the borrowers in place. <laughs> They're the, the impermeable barrier that allows you to... Tell them what to do. They go do it with the borrowers. Each servicer has their strengths and their weaknesses, mm -hmm. uh, and so is the price. Some, yeah. some are really expensive. Some are not so expensive. Some monitor taxes and insurance. Some don't. Some do aggressive borrower outreach for you, and some do not. So it's really, um, and usually they're, each one will have different uh, layers of service that you can stack on top of each other. So you may find somebody who like they'll offer the full gamut and you can kind of decide how it's going to be, how much you want them to do. Um, for some people who have their own loss mitigation strategies, probably not yourself if you're coming in and this is brand new to you. Mm -hmm. um, you if you're brand new, you're probably going to want to go to somebody who's a little bit more of a full service servicer. You might pay a little bit more up front but at least you'll get to learn while you go because they will be asking you questions along the way and get an idea of like, look, what goes into handling one of these things? Yeah, so one thing I've been seeing a lot, you know, just, I don't know, I guess the word's out to maybe people who self-service or do, maybe did the seller financing route. Uh, we see, you know, we ask them, hey, what, I saw this was self-service. Can you give me a little, you know, color on what the, what the situation is so I can understand it? And so... And you find it, though, yeah, but self-servicing, like, it's, it's no big deal. But I'm like, how many people self-service? Is, is that really a, a thing? It, I mean, it is a thing. And um, unfortunately, there's the little bit of, like, you don't know what you don't know we talked about. Like, you know, if it ever came down to a dispute between the, self, the person self-servicing and the borrower, like, I've seen pay histories come over, and the payment history is literally – it's an amortization schedule where they're just ticking off when they make the payment. Oh, they made that payment. Tick. Huh. This is it's like new... the countdown to Christmas. Yeah, it's basically, it's the countdown to Christmas. <laughs> and so, That's you know, funny. when you go to start asking for servicing notes and payment history, they say, well, payment history, what's the payment history? Yeah. Here it is. You know, here's a sample of receipts. Uh, well, the, you know, they'll say, here's uh, photocopies of cash they gave me. I've seen that before. Oh, my gosh. I've seen them say, well, here's my bank account. And they'll send over 12 months of bank account where they'll black out everything on the page except, there it is, there's their payment being deposited. Or here's copies of all the checks that they've deposited, and here's a copy of the deposited check. So, I mean, wow. yeah, so... Is it's, there a safe way to do it as a self-service? I, I, I'm i all for no. Yeah? I'm all for, like, just give it to somebody and let did them Did you ever self-service anything? We did at the beginning. Um, what was that like? We were doing it wrong. Yeah? But yeah, we, we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah? Because it's like, you know, we had all these loans. Um, we didn't send them hello letters. No? No, we didn't send them hello letter. I didn't know what the hell a hello letter was. I didn't know we were supposed to be doing that. So what'd you, what'd you do? You call them up and say, hey. Yeah, I called them up. And I was like, hey, we just bought your loan. Do you want to sign the house over to us? Here, I'll give you a couple thousand bucks. Oh, but when they were, say like they were, you didn't ever buy anything that was performing. No, we didn't buy anything performing. Fortunately, we started our performing thing later on. Ah, so then you got into servicing. Yes, but by the time we had that, we'd, we'd already had a servicer. So we're like, okay, let's use a loan servicer. Mm -hmm. And so we did. So Interesting. Okay, so we've talked about you need some education. Yep. You need to have your structure set up correctly. Correct. Uh, you definitely want to have a servicer. And this is something, too, you know, we were talking about before you get going. Um, it, it hurt, it, that, but here's the one thing I've seen with servicers is that it's kind of the chicken in, in the mouse thing because – or chicken in the egg <laughs> – <laughs> Tom and Jerry, man. It's, it's a chicken in the egg. <laughs> Where the, a lot of servicers won't deal with you until you have a loan to board. You know, so they're like, "What's the, what loan are you buying? What's you know, what, you know, I need to see the paperwork. What's the address?" Like, right, I haven't right, bought one right. yet. So you can't get an account. No, what you can do is you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. You can say, "Look, uh, you can talk to two or three of them. 
here's what I'm looking to buy. I want to get this set up now. Mm -hmm. I I know I'll have to call you when the loan's ready to, when I'm ready to buy it. Mm -hmm. But at least shop around. Yeah. So that way, when the time comes, you can pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. You're not wait like then the the seller's not going like, uh, hey, what's up, man? You're like, well, I'm trying to find a loan servicer because mm -hmm. that's like, oh, okay. Yeah. If you've done some of the legwork up front, you're good. So yeah, f at least start talking to the servicers. Yeah, and then also too, if you're in a transaction in paper stack, and we have a step where it's you know transfer this servicing transfer, and you, you know, we'll, hey, I, I don't have a servicer. It's like. Okie doke, you want some introductions? At that point, we have enough information to kind of give the servicer, hey, you know, here's, you know, Joe Smith needs a servicer, you know, start your process. Right. At least that, you know, put their name in there now, and by the time you get done with your transaction, you should be all good to go. Correct. So, I mean, it doesn't take that long to get set up. There's a mm -hmm. forms and different, you know, setup forms. That, and I mean, also, too, if you have don't have a servicer and you're in a transaction, if you don't have any preference towards any servicer and it's performing, probably just keep it there. I mean, that's the easiest. That's a thing. great point, Brett. If you are new to this and you're buying a performing loan and it's it's performing and it's with the servicer, uh, say, can I get in contact with somebody that serves in company and I want to keep it with them because yeah. you don't want to rock the apple cart. Mm -hmm. um, I, w I was going to hope you would try to <laughs> rock the boat. I don't know what I would have said there. I don't know. I was, oh, I was actually like, I'm going to tee this up and see if you can <laughs> mess this one up. Um, but if, if it's if it's if you got a good thing going and it's paying, don't mess with it. Just let yeah. it go. So because then you don't have the hello and the goodbye letters. You still have it's a it's a it's a transfer of ownership and the loan. Is what it's so they know that, huh? Yeah, yeah, they'll know. Hey, yeah, yeah somebody, there's some, a new investor owns your mortgage. Oh wow! I never knew that. I always just thought that they just kept paying to the same person. Just was like, they still keep paying to the yeah. same servicer. There's just something that says, "Hey, your loan has been sold. We're going to retain servicing." But yeah, there's a new there's a new owner on it. So I did not know that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, what's next in the process? You got your servicer. We got uh, talked about lights. Uh, Licensing, licensing and that. I mean, you've states. probably established by now in your education. You've established like your your, your strategy. strategy, like what you're going to be buying, whether it's performing or non-performing. Mm -hmm. So now it's setting up your saved searches, finding your assets on paper stack, mm -hmm. and then just start talking to people. Yeah, just start. That's it. Start start talking. Those are the things. That's how you. That's how you get going on it. Start talking, asking questions, talking to sellers, finding out stuff that meets your criteria, whittling it down, finding one, and then buying it. How long do you think it will all take education to first know? Everybody's different. Yeah, Everybody's I different. I So I bought, uh, TJ and I bought, I don't know, 15, uh, 10 to 15 notes before we got education. Really? <laughs> yeah. So... We're not necessarily the right way to do it, but it's just something to think about. It's like each person's a little different. Um, their risk tolerance is a little different, so. You guys had like no risk. I mean, you, you were risky as all get out, huh? I wasn't risky as all get out, but I mean, the pro it was $8,400 on something that I knew was worth, I thought, fixed up forty to $50,000. And it was on a street that I'd been down a hundred times. So for me, I was like, well. And I knew it was vacant. I drove by and I said, what's well, vacant? So what's really the worst that could happen here? Like, that's kind of like you a buy the loan and it's like, I was like, ah, I buy the loan. I guess we would have to foreclose. I didn't know anything about foreclosure, but I knew you could get it back through foreclosure. And then I knew, um, and then, you know, we had sort of stacked the cards in our deck and, and got the person's number and called them in advance and said, do you want to sign the house over? Even before you bought it? Yeah, we broke. Yeah, that was a no-no. Wow. You're not supposed to do that. That's uh, not supposed to do that. Wow. But That's we so did. We said, hey, well, you know, we knew we were about to buy it. Mm -hmm. We're like, hey, we're about to buy this loan. Are you interested in signing the house over? And she's like, I got five foreclosures going on right now. I don't need another one. Yes, you can have it. Wow. And so she signed the house over. So 14 That's days right. in, we had our money back out and sold it. It's awesome. Yeah, it was now, great. just imagine... Had that person not called you with sitting, wanting to buy a note, and had it been far away, you might have said no. I, I mean, maybe, maybe I don't know, but it was whatever. Interesting. Here we are. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started. Uh, you know, pick your not, educator. Not yeah, everything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just it's a high level thing. At least it's, the things that will help people on the on the. I on think the pick your pick pick your educator. 
is like the most important. Like go get education because that's going to set the groundwork and the rest of the stuff will probably fall in. You'll know where your money is going to come from. You'll know like I kind of have money here set aside. Mm -hmm. Um, An educator is going to probably talk to you a little bit about structure. Mm -hmm. They're going to probably tell you a lot what I said. Uh, Go talk to an attorney. (laughs) That's that's an important thing. Um, You know, they're going to talk to you about loan servicers. So, you know, pick yourself a pretty good educator. Cool. Yeah, and there's a, there's a list on the Paperstack site. If you go to the support uh, knowledge center, we do have a list of educators that we uh, know and, you know, yeah, that you can go. That. Yeah, that's I, did, it. I didn't know that. Well, we get this, we get these questions. Yeah, I get these questions where people are saying, well, can I get some education? And here's a page that has a whole list of them. And so it's all the ones that we've uh, you know dealt with. And Perfect. It's a whole list of educators you can go check out. And, and then we actually even have a whole list of all the servicers. There's a whole they have all this stuff in the, the knowledge center nobody even knows about. Just, we need a link. It's a little easier to get to the knowledge center. It's on the footer. <laughs> it's on the footer. <laughs> it's on the footer. I mean, it's not going to make the header, but you know, like you know, the blog didn't even make the header. But that's because we only have like five or six blog posts. So you know, we got to get more blog posts out there. Mm-hmm. But that's it for this episode of the Paper Tech Podcast. If you have something you want to hear, uh, some questions you want to answer, topics to discuss. Yep, yep. Or somebody interviewed. You know, if you want to have somebody interviewed, uh, you know. Please let us know. We got all the equipment now. So we got the, the cool equipment. We've been waiting to have the equipment in. We're ready. It's it's time to start the uh, the interview process. You know? Yep. Yeah. What's his, Larry? Who's the guy, Larry King? No, no. What's the guy? Larry, did, Larry King did interviews. It was Larry King. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Don't mind him. Thank you, guys. (laughs) See you on the next one. See you. Bye.